friends about it. Go tell your friends about it. Go tell your friends about it. Tell them about it. Hey pretty girl, welcome to my channel. My name is Manaya. If you are new here, girl, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell. We love you, we welcome you, and we're happy to have you, period. If you're a returning babe, I miss you, I love you, I hope things are going how you want it, if not manifest it, period. So y'all, today, as y'all can see by the title, is a story time, period, yes, okay? So today's story time is about why I left my job. Um, as y'all know, I was working at the spa, and this was really, I'm not going to say it was my dream job, but it was really a job that I really enjoyed. Like, I enjoyed it. So, I know y'all like, Manaya, you enjoyed it. Like, why you quit? Like, what's up? So, let's get right into that. So, first y'all, let's go back a little bit. I have been a licensed cosmetologist since 2021. I have just been in esthetician school a few months ago. Once I got out of school, I was freelancing, as y'all know. And I was like, this is cool, this is fine, but I wanna get with a team, you know, make some more money, learn some more things, meet some more people. So I was able to land my first job um, in my industry in a like a lash bar. And this was short lived because this was just something to do until I started institution school. So I really didn't get the full effect of it. So my thing was, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to school, you know, get what I need to do, take my test, do everything. And then uh, try to jump back into my field. Y'all, what I didn't know was the, the job market had changed so much for beauty professionals since I had been in school those small nine months. Everything became such a small window of choices. Like everything that was paying good money was so far away from where I was. And everything that was around where I was was like, it was not given. It was not given at all. So, and when I say not giving, I'm talking about either the location, the the clients, um, the management. It just wasn't up to par for what I wanted. And I was like, dang, like this sucks. So I went back to freelancing. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna just ride this out until God find me somewhere. And it got to the point, y'all, I was like, okay, maybe I'm just supposed to just find something to do just for now like maybe i could find me a little job promote my business there so i did i got me a job at applebee's and that was not for me y'all i stayed at applebee's for like two weeks i was like i'm gonna give me a cute little job as a hostess work part-time do what i need to do hand out my cards it'll be cool it wasn't for me it wasn't for me and i left <laughs> so i'm just like let me i need some clarity and i went to go see a psychic and I blocked that so y'all could go watch that. It's on my channel. And I was like, I told her straight up. I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I know that I'm supposed to be paid, but I don't know how I'm supposed to be getting to the money. So she basically told me, she was like, you just need to focus on finding a job that is in your field. So I was like, are you sure? Are you sure, Becky? Because what I see ain't what you're telling me. So I went back, I prayed on it because I'm the type of person, even though the psychic says something, I still, I'm going to consult God. And so that's what I did. So I was just like, God, if this is, you know, what you want me to do, make it clear. And uh, I gave it like a little, little time, probably like that next week. Well, I'm not going to cap. Like three days later, I started looking and more jobs was popping up. And I found this spa that was near my home. It was black owned. They had services that I would love to offer. And she was looking, girl, for a skin specialist. So I applied and I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I'm the type of person, if I apply Wednesday, I want the job by Thursday. And applying in the beauty industry is just not like that. They, they work on their own time. You know what I'm saying? So. I just had to be patient. So that was the number one thing that was like <clears throat> a little bit of a challenge for me during that time because I'm a patient person. But when it comes to that money on, and at the time I was in right there, girl, built, shit was tight. So I was like, yeah, you need to put me on that payroll. So I applied like a Thursday and I said, okay, I'm going I'm to be different. I'm going to give it like a good, I'm going to give it that business day and the weekend. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, she's a small business. She probably work over the weekend. So Monday, 
I called and checked on my application. I was like, hey, just call and check the status. And she was like, okay, I'll give you a call back. That was a red flag because y'all know when, when jobs say they're going to call you back, they ain't calling your ass back. Nine times out of ten, they're not calling you back. Okay, so I was like, okay. You know, I started applying for some more places, but I really didn't want to be at these other places. I wanted to be with her. Okay, because she, I feel like she was running to me. So Wednesday rolled around, I got a phone call, and she was like, are you able to come in for an interview? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am. So that was Wednesday. I think I went for my interview on Friday. I never forget it was at one o'clock. Y'all, I didn't have no car at the time. I had to Uber to my interview. Got there on time. I was looking real cute. Um, I got there, met her. Um, she, you know, approached me at the front door. Hey, how you doing? You know, nice, black, beautiful, black woman. So I'm like, okay, yeah. So she was like, hey, you know, um, we're going to call her. We're going to call her Shelly. She's like, hi, I'm Shelly. I'm the owner, you know, whatever. So I do my interview. Y'all, this was a long-ass interview, like one of the longest interviews I ever had. So she asked me, you know, tell me about you, tell me about your skill set, your certifications, whatever. Then, y'all, she pulls out this long-ass sheet with questions on the front and the back, y'all. So y'all know what I do. I get right. I get into every question that she asking me and I answer to the best of my ability. You know what I'm saying? I lead the rest to God. Okay. And so she comes, she walks out for a minute, comes back in. She was like, well, I love your personality. I would love to offer you the job. So, okay. That was Friday. You know, I took the job, whatever. And uh, y'all know about Monday. I'm, I'm looking for a phone call. I'm looking for an acceptance letter. I'm looking for something. Nothing. So I said, you know, she's a small business. Let me, you know, give it a few more days. Wednesday come around. Nothing. So I call and I get the receptionist. We're going to call her Beezy. So um, Beezy picks up and she's like, hey, you know, she's not available at the moment. You know, I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, just tell her to get back with me. And she did call me that next day and was like, you know, hey, I'm still working on your acceptance letter. So I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, she lets me know in the interview it's only her. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So y'all, long story short, I didn't end up getting my acceptance letter until that following Monday. Okay. And I was, the acceptance letter came on like that Monday. I was supposed to start, I think on that following Monday. So it was like, and these are like, this is a sketchy timeline, but it's about right. So all in all, it was a long hiring process. I had a lot of time to wait and bills are just stacking up. Like money is coming in, but I ain't seeing the shit because I still have things to, you know, pay for. So I'm eager to start this job, y'all. One, because I'm ready to get paid. And two, because I'm ready to finally be doing something that I've been studying these last few months. You know, it'll be around my, my, my girls. You know what I'm saying? She had an all black team. I'm excited. So I start, I get there. Y'all, why do I show up late on the first damn day? I misread the offer letter. I'm looking at my set schedule and it was for 10, it was for 11 to 7, I believe. And I got there at 11, not seeing that in the top of the second letter, it said your training starts at 10, so bitch. I'm like beating myself up on the inside low key because I'm like, bitch, you've been waiting damn near a month to start this job. Get your shit together. Okay. So she was real kind about that. She was like, okay, that's fine. You know, just make sure you're on time. You know how that goes. I'm like, damn, I'm like, damn, don't, don't start getting on me already. But I couldn't blame her. You know, so it was my first day. So we go to the back. We have like a little training session. You know, she asking me what I'm ready, what I'm already skilled in, what I'm already, you know, ready to do. And it was kind of like a short, intro you know um so she kind of left me in the break room just to kind of get familiar and we ended up having a walk-in and at the time that i was being hired i was the only last check there um it was one another girl there but she was not like on the schedule at the moment if that makes sense so she was like you want to do some lashes i was like yeah so i'm like god give me a chance to redeem myself first day like two hours in let's do it let's do it so I'm like, this is a chance for me to prove myself, like show her what I can do. Did the lashes, the girl won the classic set. She loved it. Cool. So, you know, she was like, tell me, so you know you did good with your lashes. The first day was real short. So y'all, as I'm getting more acquainted with the job, I'm realizing what I'm good at, what I need more help in. 
and the, you know she's realizing as well so she's like hey um you can start shadowing me you know so you can start getting better with your things and she was like what do you have problems with right now like as far as your lashes because that's really all i struggle with facials body treatments that ain't nothing the lashes was really what i wanted to perfect and she was like what do you struggle with right now so i was like you know and i saw waxing y'all i cannot wax when i got to her i cannot body wax so um that was the first thing she trained me on it was waxing so i started training and the way we would do training a client would come in they would pay like a model price because i would be training and then i would have like a senior professional in there with me training me or it would be her so i did that for like i did that like twice and then one day one of my co-workers had a client she was she was joking me she was like manaya you want to take this wax client i was like no and i said it just like that and they was like girl they was like what's wrong i said i told y'all like i'm not comfortable with waxing yet and she's a full she's paying full price i said i'm not comfortable with that y'all once I said that, I don't know if, I don't know if Shelly was right outside the door, y'all. She like bust in the door, like. She like, what, what did you say? What, what did you say? I said, I don't, I'm not comfortable waxing. What do you mean? What are you not comfortable with? Like, just like that. Like, hold up, wait a minute, girl. We was just cool three weeks ago. We was just cool this morning. So I'm like, hold on, trying not to take it personal. I said, I'm not comfortable with still laying the wax. I don't know how to get my lip. I'm not cool. Y'all, she's talking about some. Oh no, oh no, you're gonna have to wax. You you you're gonna have to wax. So I kind of just like reluctantly walk because everybody's in a break room. Y'all know I cannot stand attention and I cannot stand making a scene. Okay, I just walk out the break room. I follow her and I'm in there and I'm reluctantly doing the wax. She she like she like and I'm looking at her like. And so the client starts to like get uncomfortable. So you know, I just pick up the wax, do what I can, and I do what I can. And guess what? I cannot get that wax up. She ended up having to do the damn wax anyway. I felt like as a professional, as a business owner, as a mentor, you should have in that moment. Okay, Manai, what's the problem? Okay, I understand you don't feel comfortable, but this is a part of your job description. Just come in here and shout on me because we gotta get you waxing. That wasn't what she did. That wasn't what she did. She came in with so much aggression. With so much irritation. You mad at me because I, I can't learn how to wax in three days? I'm sorry. Okay. And we don't talk about no eyebrows. Okay. We're talking about full labia. We're talking about full vagina, Botox. Real, real, real intricate places. Okay. So that was a real red flag for me. Like that was one of the first red flags. That, that really rubbed me the wrong way. Because I'm just like. I know I told you I learned fast in the interview. But I hope you don't think I'm no robot. Like. So I, I eat that. I, I don't say nothing. The next day I come in, she's like, how do you feel about your waxing? I said, about the same as I did yesterday. I'm not comfortable yet. I said, it's going to take me some time to build up my muscle memory, my dexterity in my hands. Okay, I get that. And then she goes to ask me again, what are you having problems with? I said, just doing it. I haven't been doing it long enough to, to get the routine of it. Okay, well, we're going to keep you training. We're going to keep you um on models and everything so you can get comfortable. Okay, cool. At this point, get out of my face because you're not even giving me time to let things sink in. You're not giving me time to let things sink in. So I'm just like, okay, whatever. Eat that. Let me just focus on what I need to do. A couple weeks later, now we're training with lashes, okay? She's like, okay, what you need help with? I'm like, okay, make a value. Y'all... She literally goes up and make a value on Monday. I get booked for make a value on Wednesday. I go in there and I'm like, hey, I have a make a value client. I don't know if this was a mistake, but you know, I'm not really comfortable. What are you not comfortable with? We just went over it Monday. I'm sorry. I said, I'm still getting used to making my fans because she was telling me how much it cost her to, to buy pre-made fans. So she was trying to push me to make my own fans. Cool. Okay. Cool. But give me some time to learn how to make the handmade fans. Cause that shit is not easy. It's not easy. And my thing is, I don't want to take the easy way out. Just give me some time to learn, to master. And then I, you won't, I gotta be at your hair. Literally. You have to get on there. But it seemed as if every time she taught me a skill, she wanted me to go ahead and 
and try it and i'm just like well can i at least try on a, a, a model somebody that's not paying for a price like i don't i don't feel comfortable with that and y'all she looked at me like i had two damn heads or something she was like well she already booked you know just do just do what you can it should be fine in that moment it was giving money hungry in that moment it was giving do you really care about your clients do you really care about me because if i fuck up their lashes they don't go to you, yeah, but that's me. And I, my hope, my biggest thing was I'm new. I don't want to mess up my 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 flow before I get it flowing. And that's what that was giving me. You know what I'm saying? And every time I would tell her, this would happen like every few days. Like, and she she was like, "Are you practicing at home?" I'm like, "Yes, but things take time." And I was like, and I would be trying to assure her, like, "I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it," but. That don't mean book me for the service just because you just trained me on a few days ago. And that kept happening. And I'm just like, okay, you're money hungry. You're money hungry. And um, I don't like that. I don't like that. Because I don't care if it took me one month, six months to master something. I should not have been doing those services on those clients with me not being fully trained. Sue me, bitch. I don't care. Like, that's just how I feel. I, to me, that was just not ethical. It was not right. And the fact that it happened so many times, I was just like, something got to give. So it got to the point where I would stop telling her that, oh, we just trained on this a few months ago or a few days ago. I'm still not comfortable. I'm still not comfortable. Because I'm like, obviously, she don't care. So I would just do my best and I would, I would leave it on the flow. I'm like, if they don't like it, I'm a straight up tap. I just got trained on it. And eventually, y'all, that caused me to start getting pulled into meetings. Caused me to start getting pulled into meetings, y'all. And the meetings, it every time she did it, she would try to do it different. The first time she pulled me in, she was like, I'm just trying to see are you okay? You know, how are you doing with your skills? And I said, I'm fine. I'm still trying to learn. I started getting real short in the start because I started to feel like you were messing with me. You were harassing me because I'm not learning as fast as you want me to learn. So I started putting that block up. Like, I'm doing what I can do. That's it. That was that was me number one. Me number two. Okay. Um, I was starting to get discouraged with my lashing. And it was starting to show a little bit, I guess. I wasn't like walking around like down in the Delta. I just wasn't overly excited for my clients to come how I was before. And that probably had something to do with me like knowing that, okay, I'm I'm not where I need to be. And also, I'm feeling this stress because I, I know you are looking over me trying to see if I'm getting it as fast as you want me to get it. Yeah, second meeting. Hey, I see you're not as... First, is are you okay? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And she was like, I said, what do you mean? First, I said, what do you mean? She was like, you know, you just don't seem happy to be at work. I said, I'm fine, you know. Long story short, that was that, was that meeting. The third meeting... And I'm going home telling my mama, because y'all, my mom is a corporate baddie. She know how that tear works. So I'm like, mom, this don't sound right. She's like, yeah, they got eyes on you for some reason. I don't know if they're trying to get you out. I don't know if they're trying to, I don't know. But she's like, they got eyes on you. So I was getting so irritated. And at this point, I definitely feel like I was being harassed intentionally. Oh, hold on, y'all. Let me, let me rewind. The third meeting, I went home one day. One of my clients, she was unhappy. You know, bitch, I was over it. Like, I'm like. Goodbye, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I got her together. I left. It was one of those days for me. And she gets home. Well, I get home and I get a message from her saying it was a screenshot of somebody saying that they were unhappy with their service that they had gotten from Shelly. And Shelly sent it to me saying that, hey, even I have bad reviews. Even I, you know, mess up sometimes, but don't let that get to you. Weird. Okay, cool. Whatever. I said, okay, thanks. Left it at that. The next day, y'all, I finished with a client. And every time she would pull me into a meeting, it would always it, it would always be to try to catch me off guard. It would be while I'm coming back in there to pull a product, coming in there to um soon as after I finish a client, you know, I'm still in that mind frame because she would want it to be. I don't know if y'all know this part of psychology, but if you ask a, a person something while they're already occupied, they damn near have no choice but to tell you the truth. So she would always do this, not knowing that bitch, I will tell you the truth in my sleep. I don't care. So that was always a red flag to me because 
a real professional is going to say, hey, meeting at 10 a.m., meet, you would always try to catch me off guard. Bitch, ain't no need. Because I'm going to say the same thing every time, and that's how I feel. So, this particular day, it was the day after she sent me the review, and she was like, she was tell, asking me about a client. We just going to call her a client, Jane Doe. Who is Jane Doe? I said, a client of mine that I had yesterday. This is, I always talk to her just straight up, up and down, because... What are you trying to get at? That was my only thing with her. What are you trying to get at? Every time we would have these meetings, she never would talk to me how I'm talking to y'all. This is the computer. She would be like on the computer and I'm like right here or something. So she was like, yeah, who is Jane Doe? So I'm like a client I had yesterday. What? Tell me about her. What? How was she doing her facial? I said, quiet. I said, why? What happened? This girl says, we're going to get into that. So in my mind, let's get into it right now. Because why are you trying to do all this beating around the bush? I said, she said, we're going to get into that. I didn't say nothing. She's like, still on the computer. Did she enjoy her facial? Did she, you know, I said, yeah, she left happy. You know, I did the facial, followed the protocol. It was a regular, it was a regular service. So she was like, still not looking at me. I have not made eye contact with me once. So, yeah, I see that she left a review that she's unhappy with her um, facial. I said, okay, well, what did she say happened? She was like, well, you can see here that um, she has um, put a, uploaded a picture of a cotton round that has dirt on it. I said, well, I can assure you, because I already saw what she was doing. I said, well, I can assure you that she did not leave with dirt on her face. I did a very deep pore cleansing, and I, and I always do an assurance wipe at the end of every facial. She did not leave with dirt on her face. I said, she probably left, got into some activities, and that was probably her nighttime wipe, but she did not leave this facility with her face dirty. Oh, Oh, I believe that. I just wanted to make sure with you, you know, these reviews can get kind of crazy, you know. I ain't say nothing. Yeah, I just wanted to check with you. Still not looking at me. I just wanted to check with you to make sure everything went okay in the facial. I said, yes, it was fine. She didn't say nothing for about a good five minutes. I said, so is, is that everything? Oh, yeah, that's fine. You're, you're good to go. What kind of passive aggressive manipulation kind of shit is this? And I'm thinking, like, did you text my phone the night before to try to... You tried to do something. It didn't work. Okay, it didn't work. I'm sorry. I don't know what she was, what she wanted out of me in that moment. I don't know, but it was weird. So now, two weeks later, y'all, this is about the fourth meeting. Y'all know, now I don't play them games. I said, okay, she either getting ready to let me go, she getting ready to wrap me up. You gonna do something because you're not about to keep putting me into these meetings. So this time, within these two weeks, y'all, we had got appointed a, a spa manager. So now it's Shelly and the spa manager in here. So she's like, first of all, you late to the meeting. Shelly is late to the meeting. She comes in there and all of this is calculated. Okay, I don't, you're not late on purpose. You ain't that damn busy. So she gets in here all fake busy. Y'all, oh, good morning. I'm oh, sorry I'm late. Sorry I'm late. Good morning. This is me. Good morning. So, yeah, we just want to see what's going on with you. Um, you just don't seem happy at work. This is exactly how she starts the meeting. And I said verbatim. I said, why do I keep being pulled into meetings? Y'all, you, you would have thought I grew 10 heads. What, what do you mean? What? Huh? <laughs> I said, this is about the fourth meeting I've been pulled in into within about the last four to five weeks. What's going on? Oh, we were just trying to see if you were okay. You know, it just seems like your mood is changed. I said, I just told y'all that I'm okay. You know, it's starting to feel like something else. Well, we don't do any setups or anything like that. So we just wanted to do, we were just checking on you, make sure we woke. I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. And they looking, I'm looking. So then Shelly goes, well, I guess that's it. I said, all right, y'all have a good day. 
And from that moment, I, even when I tried to come in there and be like talkative or whatever, I just couldn't. I couldn't muster up anything past the, hey, how you doing? Or anything outside of work. I don't care. I don't care what you have for lunch. I don't care what's going on with your car, what's going on with your kids. I don't care. I'm here to do my work because now I feel like y'all got some other shit going on. And it's, I'm focused on the craft. Get back to the crowd. Y'all not worried about the crowd. Y'all worried about some job politics shit that don't pay me. So I got real disconnected from the team as far as that went. You know, I always spoke, hey, how you doing? Gabe, you know, laughed a little bit when I could, but my focus was on my work. And it would be small things that happen in between, y'all. I remember one day we had this, we have a jar box. We had a jar box that the clients could leave their tip in. I was going in the jar box one day after my shift and the receptionist, Beezy, pulls out an envelope and was like, hey, here you go. So I'm looking crazy. And before I could say anything, she was like, yeah, I know it's supposed to go in there, but I just didn't feel like putting it in there. Give me my shit. So that was a red flag. What the fuck you mean you didn't feel like putting it in there? Okay. And by this time in my mind, like, I'm already about to go because y'all on some other stuff and I'm not with that. And then y'all busy was always nice, nasty with me. Some days she'll come in there, hey, man, how you doing? And some days she'll just be so passive aggressive. And I don't like passive aggressive, bitch. I'm right here. So she just stay right here. It'll be times that I come in there and I'm walking right past you. Hey, how you doing? And you will leave a message on the on the schedule instead of just telling me what you need me to know. And then there'll be days in there like they'll put stuff on the schedule. Laundry duty. Do this. Do this. It's a way to tell your people things. It's a way to tell your people things. And then y'all, somebody y'all call stealing tips. I go to get my tip one day. Y'all, you would have thought it was World War III. Shelly come out of nowhere. Was doing a client. Oh, 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 y'all can't get tipsy. I have to get them for y'all. When she said that, I said, no, 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 no. Ain't no way I'm in here slaving. You already got control over my commission. And you over here trying to... Okay, y'all, so I did have to switch to my camera. But when she said that, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. You are not about to have that much control over my income, over my hard-earned money. That's not going down. And that brings me to the final point of it all. Y'all, I was never getting paid as much as I should have got paid, okay? And I'm going to be straight candid with y'all. I was getting paid 35% commission. That is it. It was no base pay. It was 35% commission plus tips. But once that whole tip situation happened between the receptionist and her telling me that she had to now give us our tips while we were five years old, asking for cookies out of a cookie jar. To me, to me, at that point, you exited reality, okay? Because it's not worth it. And I knew from the beginning that I would be taking a pay cut. But I was like, if she's willing to teach me and train me, it's fine. But at the end of the day, I can't tell nobody how to how to run their business. And neither do I. I understand what's not for me and I leave. So that is why I left. And I do not wish those girls any bad. I feel like I feel like I was the odd one out. You know what I'm saying? So what wishes to them? What wishes to Shelly, to the business? It was just like being on the inside looking in, I understand why so many people go solo in the beauty industry. I understand why people do not have the utmost respect for like chain beauty jobs. I, I get it. I get it because now I've worked on the corporate side of it. I've worked on the small business side of it. And it all makes sense. So do what you will with that. Thank you so much y'all for watching this video. I love you and I will, I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm. Oh,